Welcome to the Astrologian 30 to 80 Skills Guide. In this guide, we will cover all of your skills as you train to play three blue eyes white dragons in one turn better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... to this. This guide is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. We will, however, be going in-depth on all of your skills and some high skill level uses for each. You may never do high-end content, but the same mentality for a skill can be used at lower levels. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. Move on to higher-end guides when you're ready. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. 50 for Realm Reborn, 60 for Heaven's Word, 70 for Stormblood, and then finally at level 80 for Shadowbringers. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the Generals tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 80. Just put your skills on your hotbar in a way you feel comfortable as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. But with all that out of the way, let's begin. Before I begin, I'm going to stress that not every dungeon run will apply to my advice. In an ideal world, players never make mistakes, but we all know that will never happen. Nobody is perfect and you too will make plenty of mistakes. I'm going to focus on the ideal scenarios, but also try and account for when things go wrong. Sometimes you have to account for the worst situations possible. To put it another way, healers have to adjust if they want everyone to live. Also, this is not a healing the basics guide. This is going to focus in on astrology and skills specifically, and only slightly mention general healer tactics. Which, speaking of other healers, I highly recommend looking into one of the other healers. In general, I feel Astrologian is the most technical and difficult of the three to play, even without accounting for the main gimmick of the job. If nothing else, this will lead you into having a basic gear set to start Astrologian with. To become an Astrologian, you must first finish the entire A Realm Reborn storyline, ending on the quest Before the Dawn. Accept the first quest of Heaven's Word, coming to Ishgard, and you will be allowed to explore Ishgard at your leisure. Astrologian's starting quest is in the Pillars in the east at the Athenaeum Astrologicum Aetherite Shard. Any and all other requirements will be met by normally playing the game. Astrologian comes with some of their role actions to start. Level 8 Repose, Level 10 Asuna, Level 18 Swift Cast, and level 24, Lucid Dreaming. I will not be going deep into role action usage, but all of these are important skills to keep around. Check the healer role action guide in the description if you need an overview. I recommend it, since they're closely tied with being an effective healer. Finally, let's get into the skills we start with. Enjoy the feature film. At level 20, we get a trait of Magic and Mend that boosts our power by 10% over level 20. You'll never notice the difference. Level 1 and level 4, Malefic and Combust. Our base DPS toolkit is a 150 potency spell for 400 mana, and a 40 potency damage over time for 18 seconds, also costing 400 mana. Dots run off of a Servitic, which is every 3 seconds. As such, this dot hits 6 times total for 240 potency for the full duration. Dot as many enemies as you can before you spam Malefic. If it's not already clear from playing either of the other healers, Astrologian's personal DPS kit is by far the weakest of the three. You should still put out DPS where you can, just don't expect to be as powerful as the other healers at this point. Find your comfy point to let tanks drop, and practice the heal and DPS balance. Speaking of healing, level 1 and level 26, Benefic and Benefic 2. Our basic heal is 400 potency at the cost of 400 mana, 
and the stronger Benefic 2 is 700 potency for 700 mana. Much like either other healer, Benefic 2 basically entirely replaces Benefic 1. But Benefic 1 is going to make a lot more appearances than Kier 1 or Physic, because of a very slightly faster cast speed and a trait we'll see later. Either way, try and use Benefic 2 as needed on the tank. Any damage on an ally or yourself can probably be topped off with Benefic 1, but if it's major damage, you will need Benefic 2. Just make sure it's enough damage to need it. Scratch damage can be ignored. Half health? They probably need help. Even starting from level 30 though, a single heal is enough to heal even tanks in most cases. Level 10, Helios. This is our basic AoE heal. In a 15 yom radius around you and at the cost of 700 mana, this heals 330 potency to everyone in range. This isn't that much weaker than a Benefic 1, so anytime you think the entire party could use a bunch of healing, Helios is the quick and dirty way to get it done. Once again, don't bother worrying about scratch damage. Auto regens will kick in for that. But once bosses start getting heavy raid-wide damage, Helios and skills like it will start getting much more use. But by now you've seen that only starts once we catch back up to level 50 in both Dungeons and Trials. It may not get that much usage to start, but by now you have seen just how much AoE healing there is. Level 12, Ascend. With an MP cost of 2400 and a massive cast time of 8 seconds, this brings a fallen player back to life with a 25% penalty to all offensive stats for 100 seconds. This can stack twice. If an ally dies, Raise them as soon as possible. Make sure nobody else is in danger of dying before you start casting, since you are stuck for a long time. If it's the tank who died, it is especially important to get them up. You and your allies can't take too many hits from enemies, especially compared to tanks. The massive mana costs ensures you can't be constantly raising people, so you are incentivized to be sure people stay alive where possible. Just remember, you can't save everyone. People will die no matter how good you are. Be prepared to get a lot of use out of Ascend. A lot of things are out of your control and will force you to heal a lot more than you intend. Also, remember that one of our starting roll actions is Swift Cast. This removes that 8 second cast time entirely. With our GCDs taken care of, let's move on to our Astrologen abilities. Level 6, Light Speed. On a 120 second cooldown, this reduces all GCD cast times by 2.5 seconds. This means everything but Ascend becomes an instant cast. No other spell has a cast time for the 15 second duration. At any point you need to spam heals, use Light Speed. Light Speed really shines mostly only in emergencies, when the tank is big pulling, or in trials and raids where heavier healing is expected. Very important is the amount of movement this allows for. 15 seconds of being able to move and cast is extremely useful. Even if you don't need to spam healing, use it when you need to run around a lot. It will become very common for you to need to move and heal at the same time. This will solve a lot of those problems. You may even get the chance to use this to be able to DPS and move at the same time as well, but that is much less common than using it for heals. Level 15, Essential Dignity. This is the godliest heal in the game, challenging even Benediction. On a very short 40 second cooldown, this cures 400 potency as a base, but it linearly scales based on the health of the target. At 1% HP remaining, the power increases all the way up to 1100 potency. In low level dungeons, this is almost entirely all you need in terms of healing. If you need a reason to practice playing Limbo with the tank's health, this alone is reason enough. Let tanks fall low, pop it, and you'll instantly fully heal even tanks until you level up a bit more. Even once HP scaling outstrips the power of Essential Dignity, 
it remains an extremely powerful tool. As an initial suggestion, use this only after 50% HP has been reached. That way, it at least scales to be stronger than a Benefic 2. In 50 plus content, Warriors, Dark Knights, and the Gunbreakers have skills that involve them hitting 1 HP for some reason or another, and Essential Dignity will be an absolutely amazing skill when combined with those abilities. Level 30, Diurnal Sect. This is the skill we get from our opening job quest. Do your job quests, please. Your gain skills are extremely strong and important to your performance, which isn't exactly obvious from this one as it does absolutely nothing at the moment. But do your quests anyway. I won't be saying when a job quest gives the skill any further, but I will denote it on screen. Diurnal Sect says it adds regens to certain actions, but we have none of those actions at the moment. Just get used to turning it on to build the muscle memory of having a stance on. Also, you can't take it off mid-combat. This is mostly just a safety measure so you don't accidentally take it off mid-fight and wonder why things aren't working right. Either way, we will need this later. And now, for the start of the main event, I suppose. Level 30, Draw and Play. So, with Astrologen we have this UI element. This is the Arcana Gauge. This is where we will look for a clear visual on what our draw action gave us. Draw itself is on a 30 second cooldown and draws an Arcana. One of six will be drawn and will be displayed within play. Play is actually how you use the card. The six cards and how they look are as follows. The Balance. The Bowl. The Arrow. The Ewer. The Spear. The Spire. All six act as damage buffs for 15 seconds to specific targets and always yourself. These are denoted by their borders. The three cards with the blue border will buff the damage of melee DPS and tanks by 6%. Other allies will get only a 3% boost. Cards with the purple outline will buff the damage of all ranged DPS, both physical and magical, and healers, by 6%. All other allies gain 3%. Put simply, blue to melee, purple to ranged. Now the biggest problem is, without checking gear, or knowing how to play every job, or using third party software, it's anywhere from hard to impossible to tell who is the best person to give cards to. If you have a bard and a mechanist, who do you give cards to? Without some very intense research, or using the highly inaccurate aggro rankings, there are no easy answers. So I'm going to give you general ordering of who to give cards to. Follow this list, but it is not a gospel. If you see a specific player playing poorly, and you know they are playing poorly as a fact, maybe because you know how to play that job well, or they're dying a lot, skip them. A bad summoner can even be out DPS'd by an average tank, if they are playing bad enough. Also try and prioritize high level raiders with the gear or titles to match. In general this means they will have a higher level of understanding of the job they're playing, but even that is not cut and dry. Maybe they bought their clears or something. If nothing else, use this as a further form of observation to try and find a player who is performing well. And in general, use every single card you get. If you have no ranged DPS, give that ranged card to a melee. As mentioned earlier, Astrologen DPS is weak. A good melee player will still gladly take a ranged card and vice versa, and it will be better than using it on yourself. Draw the moment you get into an instance. Wait to play the card until you get into combat, but the sooner you draw the first card, the sooner you can draw your next. Finally, draw will also heal 800 mana per use. This essentially gives you 
a ton of extra mana as long as you don't forget to draw a card. Between this and Lucid Dreaming, you should rarely run into mana problems now. This all leads into... Level 30, Undraw. But that is finally the entire toolkit we start with. It's pretty basic. You're almost no different to a white mage at this point. Cards are the biggest talking point at the moment, and will come back more later. For now, draw a card every time it comes off cooldown, and play it before you draw another. Holding a card between pulls is often effective, so you can start the next pull off with two cards. But if a pull is nowhere near over, spend that card. Additionally, we don't have a rotation much at all. Here's a visual of what you should basically aim to do, but don't expect an overview other than this. Put up your dot, then spam your single target hit. It's just as basic as the rest of your toolkit. Level 34, Aspected Benefic. We now have a reason to have Diurnal Sect on. Costing 400 mana, Aspected Benefic heals for a lowly 200 potency. However, if Diurnal Sect is applied, there's an additional effect. A 15 second heal over time, or HOT, is applied to the target. This is a 200 potency regen for 1000 potency across the entire duration, totaling 1200 potency of healing. That's 100 potency more than a 1% essential dignity. Once the tank has taken a little damage, throw Aspected Benefic on them and they'll be more than covered for the next 15 seconds. And it's far more mana efficient than Benefic 2. You can also use it to heal allies who damage themselves. If they don't immediately take another hit, they'll be topped off just fine. And if they take a hit after that but before the regen runs out, the rest of the regen will heal some of that too. You'll see a lot better results on your mana with shifting a lot of your healing performance off of Benefic 2 and onto Aspected Benefic. One final note, the fact that this is an instant cast spell means it could be used while on the move too. Level 36, Enhanced Benefic. This trait boosts Benefic to have a 15% chance to give you a proc for 15 seconds. This proc guarantees your next Benefic 2 is a critical hit. The problem here is twofold. The first is that Benefic 2 basically replaced Benefic 1 unless you've started to struggle on MP. The second is that 15% chance is very, very low. You could spam your heal for a long time and never see a single proc. The only saving grace here is that it is way better than Free Cure on White Mage. Well, yes, you're not conserving mana as much as you could if you're using your proc for 900 cost on Benefic 2, the power boost on a critical heal is huge. But do not go out of your way to fish for Enhanced Benefic. Level 40, Magic Advent 2. Just like the one at level 20, but a 30% boost. You're not going to notice it at all either. Level 40, Redraw. This is a skill with charges. Upon using a charge, the recast timer will begin running to the next charge. You can have up to three charges at once. As for what Redraw does, it takes whatever card you have currently drawn and changes it to one of the other five cards at random and does nothing to affect the recast on draw itself. This massively reduces the RNG in what card you get. In the situations where you have, say, two melee DPS and you get a ranged card, Redraw has a 60% chance of drawing a melee card instead. I recommend getting used to specifically aiming for correct cards now, because it's going to get a lot messier soon. Just be warned you can redraw to get a different card, then redraw again to get the same card you just started with, just like in the clip I am showing here. Level 42, Aspected Helios. 
much like Aspected Benefic, this is buffed by Diurnal Sect. On its own, it costs 800 mana and cures a lowly 200 potency at a 15 yom radius, which is worthless. However, the diurnal bonus is really strong. This is another 15 second regen for only 100 potency per tick. In total, being a 500 potency hot and 700 potency incomplete total. That's a party wide benefic too, and more than double the potency of a normal Helios for just 100 extra mana. The issue obviously is that it's 15 seconds long. Well, short, there are sometimes fights that require a little bit more healing faster, especially in raids and higher level trials. If more healing is needed to supplement Aspected Helios, add in a normal Helios or two, depending on how much raid-wide AoE there is. Just remember to pace yourself, and also get help from your co-healer in 8-man content. With level 44, we get one of our missing roll actions, sure cast. Level 45, Gravity. For 600 mana, this does 140 potency to a targeted enemy, and all enemies within 5 yams of the original target. This is better than both Combust and a Maelfic on as few as 2 enemies. The only issue is that the extra 200 mana adds up if you've been struggling with mana upkeep. But if you have plenty of mana to spare typically, swap to spamming gravity anytime you can hit multiple enemies. And more enemies means a lot more damage. The better you get at mana upkeep, the less you have to worry about spending that extra mana for extra gravities. Level 46, Combust Mastery and Combust 2. This trait automatically upgrades Combust into a stronger version. Combust 2 is a much longer dot of 30 seconds, doing 50 potency per tick. In total, this is now 500 potency. This is now stronger than gravity on up to 3 targets. So on 2 or 3 enemies, dot them with Combust, then swap to gravity to maximize your damage. On 4 or more, skip right to gravity. In general though, this is a huge power boost to our dot. Use it anytime you can. At level 48, we get our final roll action, Rescue. Level 50, Nocturnal Sect. Alright, here's where things get immensely complicated. This is the Sister Sect to Diurnal Sect. Rather than regens, this applies shields to Aspected Benefic and Aspected Helios. Nocturnal Sect also increases the mana cost of Aspected Benefic to 700 mana. Shields are good, but really expensive. Additionally, you can only apply one sect at once. Regens or shields. Try both out and see which one you are more comfortable with, and learn the ins and outs of each sect. But let's get into specifically the effects of Nocturnal. As mentioned, Aspected Benefic increases to a much higher 900 mana cost. On top of the base 200 potency heal, the target receives a 500 potency shield on top of this to be a functional 700 potency. This is powerful for preventing damage, but that 200 initial potency is a nice heal to try and use too. There are a few extremely notable ways to use this. Pre-pull while mana regeneration is huge is the first notable use. Since the timer is so long, you can use Aspected Benefic to just apply a shield before the fight begins, functionally extending the tank's health bar and giving you more time before you need to heal for the first time. It's also helpful for when the tank is multi-pulling. While you run with the tank, the HP won't begin to drop. You can also easily reapply the shield once you see the tank lose a bit of health, to use that initial 200 potency heal. You can also pre-pull shield the tank, and then swap over to Diurnal to make use of both the shield and regen effects. Mid-fight, the use is obvious. While balancing DPS and healing, you can let the tank drop low and use Aspected Benefic to instantly heal and shield the tank, then Benefic 2 to instantly refill the health a lot. If they've started to lose HP again after, you can do another Aspected Benefic to refill the shield. 
and because both are functionally 700 potency, it comes out even on mana consumption versus Aspected Benefic followed by two Benefic 2s. The third major use I'll mention is Tank Busters. You may have noticed these on your way to Heavensward the first time around, but bosses have attacks that do heavy damage to tanks, or bust them. As we level up further, these will start showing up in dungeons and just about every single trial and raid from 60 and beyond. Even the story versions. They will be lesser or greater in power, but when you know that they're coming, you can prevent a lot of damage on the tank. Sometimes it'll be even required for the tank to survive if you're doing the highest tiers of content. We also have Aspected Helios in Nocturnal Sect. It does not have an increased cost, but on top of the 200 potency cure, it comes with a 250 potency shield on every one hit, for a total of 450 potency, and lasts for 30 seconds. This is mostly to be used to prevent raid-wide damage. Because half the power is a heal, try and make sure it uses the heal too, but that's also not always possible. Additionally, much like Aspected Benefic, if a fight will start with raid-wide damage, you can use an Aspected Helios before the fight even starts. It has a 30 second duration to be used up, which is a long time. Additionally, this shines over normal Helios, where multiple raid wides happen in a row. Aspected Helios will not only heal some of the first AoE's damage, but will prevent the next one from doing quite as much. And like with Aspected Benefic, you can alternate the casts as needed. If the boss is really doing so much damage to require three AoE heals, you can Aspected Helios, Helios, and then Aspected Helios again if needed. Specific content matters, though. Now that we're level 50, here comes the fun part. You need to learn both sects, mostly because of 8-man content. In dungeons, you can choose either one you want, swap back and forth as you please. Trials, raids, etc. You need to know both and choose based on your co-healer. A well-rounded party is one that has both regens and shields. This is especially true on higher levels and harder content. If your co-healer is a fellow Astrologian, one of you should go Diurnal and the other should go Nocturnal. If your co-healer is a White Mage, you should go Nocturnal. If your co-healer is a Scholar, this isn't even an argument, you need to go Diurnal. Play around with your shields on yourself and notice that your shields will overwrite each other. A stronger shield immediately replaces a weaker one in its entirety. This applies to Scholar shields too, and both of your shields will refuse to interact. You cannot place both a Scholar shield and an Astrologian shield on the same player. It will take the stronger one and completely remove the other. If it's weaker, it won't take the shield at all. One of you is going to end up with a half-useless toolkit if you both go shields. At least if you are both diurnal astrologians or have a white mage, your regens will stack. Keep this in mind whenever you enter a trial. Work with your co-healer, keep your party alive, and use the other skills we get as we move on. Level 50, Sinastri. On a 120 second recast, this creates a bond on the target for 20 seconds that will cause them to recover 40% of all single target spells you cast on top of the original cast, no matter who the target is. If you heal yourself or a random ally, the target gains 40% of that heal. If you heal the target of Sinastri, they still gain that extra healing. Functionally, this is a 40% power boost to your single target spells. You can put this on the tank mid-fight in order to boost how much your healing does. And if for whatever reason an ally takes damage you think you need to heal, you can still slightly heal the tank if it's during the duration of Sinastri. Or the other way around! Though using this on a DPS is probably not the best idea since tanks need far more healing. Sinastri really shines in trials and raids with multiple targets, such as add phases or mechanics that hurt both tanks. You can Sinastri one tank and heal the other to heal both at the same time. It's a genuinely weird skill, 
but when you learn how to use it, it's extremely useful. But take note at the specific wording. Single target healing spells. Abilities like Essential Dignity and a lot of the toolkit we will be getting later do not trigger Sinastri. It has to be GCD healing specifically. Additionally, the range of Sinastri is as big as the range of your single target heals, which is really huge. As long as whoever you are healing is within 30 yams of your Sinastri partner, they will get the 40% heal. If your target is past 30 yams, no heal will be received. Level 50, Divination. Before I even get into Divination, let's go back to our cards. On the Arcana Gauge, there are now three diamonds. When drawing a card, there has been a small icon above the card that I did not mention previously. This is a seal. And now playing a card while in combat will add that seal into the diamonds on the Arcana Gauge, starting from the right and shifting them to the left as you collect more seals. A fourth seal will shift the first seal obtained off of the Arcana Gauge. The seals are as follows. The balance and the bowl are the solar seal, the sun icon. The arrow and the ewer are the lunar seal, the half moon icon. The spear and the spire are the celestial seal, the circle icon. You may notice that there is one melee card and one ranged card for each symbol. The goal now becomes to collect three Arcana seals of any type, but ideally we want one of each kind, which now further emphasizes our desire to reroll cards. Not only do we want a melee versus a ranged card, we may want a sun versus a lunar. After gaining three seals, no matter what they are, we can finally use Divination itself. On a 120 second cooldown, this gives everyone within 15 yams a damage buff based on the number of differing seals you obtained. If you somehow only got one type of seal, Divination will do 4% damage up for its duration. At two unique seals, it's 5%, and if you manage to get one of each seal, it's a full 6% damage. At that point, it's a party-wide card, which is powerful and why it has such a long cooldown. Use this essentially off cooldown. Try and use it at the start of any battle, at most waiting 3 or 4 GCDs until you hit it. But if it's in the middle of a fight, but not about to end, use it here too. Get the cooldown rolling whenever you can. This is too strong of a tool to not use any time you get the chance. Level 50, Minor Arcana. Similar to Redraw and with no actual recast time, this affects the currently drawn card that is sitting in play. Depending on what card you drew, you can convert it into a different card. The Balance, Arrow, and Spear all become Lord of Crowns. The Bowl, Ewer, and Spire all become Lady of Crowns. You may have noticed that these are based on the color border of the card. The Lord of Crowns always comes from a melee DPS card, and Lady of Crowns always comes from a ranged DPS card. Both are slightly stronger versions of their respective roles, giving 8% damage up when used on the correct roll, and 4% on the incorrect roll. The problem comes in when we consider Divination. Lord and Lady do not give us seals for Divination. The balance is thus. Seals versus 1-2% extra power on the card. Divination is very much the ultimate goal still. A party-wide card is better than a card on just one person. But if you have three seals already, especially if they're three different ones to get that 6% from Divination, you will want to use only Lord and Lady until your next Divination comes out. Put simply, prioritize three seals, especially different ones, and worry about minor arcana later. You only get four cards between each Divination, so only one of them can be used as a minor arcana without having to possibly delay or even lose entire Divinations. Phew! You get all that? 
four whole level 50 skills that massively changed how we use Astrologen, and we're only level 50, it's only going to get crazier from here on out. Obviously, usually I go over openers in these kind of guides, but as a healer, your toolkit is kind of bare for DPS. Basically, throw up Combust and spam Malefic until the enemy dies. And heal, of course. Just remember to draw a card every time you can, and play it as to not waste it. Make sure to always use it in combat, or lose out on one of your seals, which at that point, Minor Arcana would be better without getting the seal. Train yourself, get used to both Diurnal and Nocturnal Sect, and move on into Heavensward content now that you've caught up to level 50. Level 54, Malefic Mastery and Malefic 2. Much like Combust 2, this is a simple power boost to 170 potency. The ways and context you use it do not change. It's just a very minor power boost to make the skill curve a little less lopsided. Mostly because you got 4 skills at level 50, and not much in Heaven's Word itself. Level 58, Collective Unconscious. On a 60 second cooldown, and only usable while under the effect of a sect, not that you'd want to use it without a sect anyway, using this causes us to project a small bubble around us in an 8 yom radius, and we can project it for up to 18 seconds. However, if we move at all while using Collective Unconscious, the bubble will end. Depending on our sect, it will have one of two effects. With Diurnal Sect, while standing inside of the bubble, damage will be reduced by 10% as long as the bubble remains up. There is also, however, the main effect called Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is applied immediately and will remain even after the bubble drops. It lasts for 15 seconds and will be reapplied every server tick you remain in the bubble. This is a regen of 100 potency, and assuming you do not get a refresh on the regen, this is a total of 500 potency of healing. Let me show you this in action. Here, I activate the bubble, and you get the buffs. One is the timer for the bubble, and the other is the Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is constantly being refreshed because we remain in the bubble. Upon dropping the bubble, we lose the other buff to keep the Wheel of Fortune, and the timer keeps going. Because of this, there are two ways to specifically use Collective Unconscious. You may remember all of the Primal fights having ultimate attacks that do major damage. That's a trend that isn't going to go away from this point on. Many raids have this kind of attack as well. You can't hurt the boss during these, so you can throw up your bubble for people to funnel into, and it will negate 10% of the boss's damage, and heal up the rest with the Wheel of Fortune effect. The other way to use this is to specifically ignore the bubble. Watch this clip. I am running around and use Collective Unconscious. The animation only half completes. You don't even see the bubble appear. But I still get the Wheel of Fortune buff. Just by pressing Collective Unconscious, the bubble is instantly placed and applied, similar to other bubble type abilities. And as a bonus, in Diurnal, the bubble effect has a delayed fall off, meaning you get the damage down buff for a few seconds, even when the bubble is gone. This means you can use Collective Unconscious for specifically the Wheel of Fortune effect and ignore the bubble itself. In a trash pull, quickly run up to the tank, Collective Unconscious, and run off. The 500 potency regen will still be on the tank, and reduce damage for a little bit. Or in bosses, time the bubble with whatever raid wides they are doing. Maybe it's a stack marker so everyone gets close anyway. Hold the bubble for one second, and then immediately drop it without losing any time on your GCD, and get both buffs. Even if you fail to get the 10% damage reduction and effect, you still heal it away with the 500 potency regen. And this is as much regen as comes from Aspected Helios without the MP cost, and on just a 60 second recast. We also have the reverse side of the coin. In Nocturnal Sect, the effects are reversed. The bubble becomes a regen for the duration of the bubble, up to 600 potency, and the Wheel of Fortune effect becomes 10% damage down for 20 seconds. In the right circumstances, this is even more powerful than the Diurnal version. In a trash pool, you can quickly throw the bubble on the tank 
to give them a mini rampart and make healing them way easier. Or perhaps it's a boss fight that spams raid-wide AoEs. Throw up the damage down on you and your allies to massively negate all the hits that are happening within the next moments. Simply put, focus on the Wheel of Fortune effect. The secondary effect from channeling the bubble constantly is nice too, but the Wheel of Fortune is the more powerful effect and much more fun to keep around. Level 60, Celestial Opposition. This is also a 60 second cooldown and only usable while under a sect. It has a 15 yom radius and has a 200 point secure attached no matter which sect you choose. In Diurnal Sect, this comes with an additional regen of 100 potency over 15 seconds, or 500 potency. In total, this comes to 700 potency. In Nocturnal Sect, this comes with a shield of 250 potency. This totals to 450 potency. In essence, Celestial Opposition is a 60 second cooldown for Aspected Helios. Put them next to each other, and you can see they have the exact same tooltip. Additionally, the shields actually stack together. If for whatever reason you're in Nocturnal and need two shields at once, you can actually do that. Use an Aspected spell and Celestial Opposition together. But in general, this can save you an Aspected Helios cast. You probably expected me to move on, but no! This is a single target heal too. Remember, this is an OGCD with a relatively short cooldown and no mana cost. It's 100% free to use on trash pulls to help heal the tank. Like I said, the shield from Nocturnal Celestial Opposition is different from your normal shield, meaning you can aspect a benefic and Celestial Opposition for a shield of 750 potency on top of the 400 potency of pure healing. Or in Diurnal, it's an extra 700 potency of pure healing while the enemies beat on the tank. Either way, we really only got two new skills here, but both of them are extremely powerful and can be used in a wide variety of ways, both single target and AOE wise. Make heavy use of both of them and make sure to remember both forms to be able to properly adjust based on whatever co-healers you get. Practice up and get ready for things to get busy by the end of Stormblood. Level 62, Earthly Star. On a 60 second recast, this skill must manually be placed. After hitting the hotkey for it, you must aim and click to place it, or press X on controller. Upon placing the star, Earthly Star will change into Stellar Detonation. Using it will do a Stellar Burst, dealing 100 potency of damage to any enemies in the star, and heal any ally for 540 potency. This star lasts for 10 seconds, which is a timer we want to run out. Letting it run out will replace it with a second timer. The star will begin to glow brighter to signify a power boost. Using Stellar Detonation or letting the second timer run out will now trigger a Stellar Explosion. This is a significant power boost to doing 150 potency to all enemies and healing any allies for 720 potency. To draw the parallel again, this is an Aspected Helios or Celestial Opposition in power but all at once. The most important part of the skill is the 60 second cooldown will begin to count down the moment you use the initial star placement. Whether you pop the star immediately or let the timers run down on their own, both situations will come off cooldown at the same time, which means you should absolutely plan for the stronger star. If it wasn't obvious, this should be used in just about every situation just like our previous skills. If you're in trash mobs, this does a huge heal for the tank and does a nice chunk of damage to any enemies surrounding them. Just be sure to place it where they are all going to be hit where they're standing. This is especially important in mass pools. In bosses, you can place this pre-pull if the boss will immediately do an AoE or tank buster. At worst, place it a few seconds into the fight and let the timer count down. Just be sure to get the enemies or boss in the star too. Free damage is free damage, on top of a godly strong heal. But if you have to choose only one, prioritize the heal. But everyone should be near the boss anyway to receive the heal and make sure it gets hit. Level 64, Malefic Mastery 2 and Malefic 3. 
Just like the last time, this upgrades Malefic 2 into Malefic 3, which is now 210 potency. And once again, nothing at all changes, just a small power boost. Level 68, Hyper Lightspeed. This simply reduces the recast timer of Lightspeed by 30 seconds to 90 seconds. This should encourage you to use it just that much more. It's a small buff to our mana and our ability to move and heal at the same time. Level 70, Sleeve Draw. On a 180 second recast, this will regen 800 mana and draw a card just like Draw. But the similarities end there. Sleeve Draw guarantees you one of the seals you do not currently have. So if you have a Lunar and a Celestial seal, you are guaranteed the Solar Seal. This massively increases your consistency with Divination. You only get to use Sleeve Draw for every other alternate Divination, but it still is increased consistency for those Divinations. Redraws are forever limited, so a 100% chance instead of a 2 in 5 chance every redraw is a huge boost to your consistency. Be sure to use Sleeve Draw whenever it comes off of cooldown, especially if you're about to ramp up into a Divination. You may not want to use this if you have all three seals already. If you already have all three different seals, it acts like a normal draw, but keeps the same 180 second cooldown. Yes, you'll get a card, but the fact that it is a guaranteed seal you don't have, drawing a completely random card serves no benefit beyond whatever minor arcana you might use. That guaranteed seal is very useful. Now that we have learned how to cheat at poker, I'm going to show you an opener here, but show it's not a perfect opener. Also, you probably should use Earthly Star somewhere before anything else, but as I went over before, some fights need you to wait to make use of the heal. Some fights you'll get the free damage, others you'll want the heal. But that aside, here is a baseline opener. Pre-pull draw the moment you zone in, at least 30 seconds before pull. Malefic as the tank is running up to pull the boss, then do the following. Light speed, combust, play, draw, Malefic, play, sleeve draw, Malefic, play, divination, and then spam Malefic forever and ever. So, as I said, you need around 30 seconds before pull for all of this to work, since a second draw is used early into the opener. This is so that the moment we get to sleeve draw, we've gotten three cards and three seals to be able to use divination. That basically is the entire purpose of our opener, to get divination out. That includes why we use light speed. With light speed active, we can double weave, play, and draw without clipping into our next GCD. Doing it three times allows us to get out our divination extremely quickly. Given how strong this skill is, on top of giving the cards to the DPS, divination should take all of our priority. But this is not something we can absolutely hope to achieve in every run. We still want to try and get three different seals, and only one of them is guaranteed. Because of this, we want to re-roll our second card until we get a different seal. Here is an example. We play the first card, then draw out our second card. It's the same seal as the first, so we'll have to do a redraw for a different seal. This redraw gives us the new seal we want, so we play the card. From here we can get back on track and draw our final seal with Sleeve Draw. This is the kind of adjustments you have to make with every use of your opener. Sometimes your second card will be what you need. Sometimes you'll need to use all three of your redraws to even attempt to get your second seal. And sometimes still only get the same seal as your first. But now you're at least guaranteed two different seals in your opener thanks to Sleeve Draw. Take whatever you can get, and get the three seal divinations wherever you can. This isn't all that much of an actual opener, but it's something to get you going and to learn to help your team as best you can. 
you'll be using this for the rest of your time as an astrologian. So get learning this as we head into Shadowbringers. Before I go further, take note that the scaling of heals has decreased dramatically above 70. You'll see little to no change level to level outside of a bigger toolkit. You'll start needing to heal a lot more often from this point forward. But by now you've been given so many off globals it'll be fairly easy to keep up like always. Level 72, Combust Mastery 2, Malefic Mastery 3, Combust 3, and Malefic 4. Just like previous power boosts, the traits simply are there to denote that we got stronger versions of these skills now. Combust 3 is now boosted 10 more potency to the dot to become 600 potency total, over 30 seconds. Malefic 4 has been increased up to 250 potency. Dot as many enemies as you can. This is a huge dot and requires 5 enemies or more to be worth using gravity before combust. But after dotting, it is still better than Malefic on 2 enemies. You really need to rely on your dot if you want to really help kill things effectively. And Malefic is just bad if it's not just one single target. Level 74, Celestial Intersection. Once again, a skill that cannot be used unless under the effect of a sect and is on an extremely short, extremely spammable, 30 second cooldown. Despite which sect you choose, it has a 200 potency cure attached. However, rather than having an effect based on your sect, it has an effect based on the opposite sect. In Diurnal Sect, this puts up a 400 potency shield on the target that lasts up to 30 seconds. While in Nocturnal, this is a 150 potency regen for 15 seconds, tolling the hot at 750 potency. Furthermore, the shield from Diurnal stacks with Celestial Opposition and Nocturnal Aspected Shields. If you have an Astrologian co-healer who is putting up shields, your Celestial Intersection Shield will not mess with their Opposition or GCD Shields. This is just a further reason to have gotten used to both sects. Not only did you need to adjust based on your co-healer, but you gain a better understanding on how to use this specific skill. As I said, you should basically spam it. You can shift Celestial Opposition to be used for AoE healing more, but should still be used for the tank and trash pools, and use the much stronger single target intersection much more often. Let me reiterate since I haven't mentioned it in a while, tank busters are very good for shielding. If you're a diurnal astrologian, you can help shield busters. Just about every single time there's a buster. But even if there aren't any busters anytime soon, Throw this out as many times as you can. Level 76, Horoscope. On a 60 second recast, this applies a special buff to your allies within a 20 yom range for 10 seconds. This works similarly to Earthly Star, where your skill changes to another one. If you hit the button again before the timer runs out, everyone with Horoscope within 20 yoms will receive a 200 potency heal. Everyone out of range will not but they will still have the buff applied. When the timer runs out, everyone who has the buff applied will still receive the heal. However, if instead of using the skill a second time, we use either of our Helio skills, Horoscope's potency will be doubled to 400. It will also completely refresh the timer of the buff to 30 seconds, giving you a lot longer to properly time the use of Horoscope. And again, if the timer runs out, the heal will still be applied. Obviously enough, this is useful anytime AoE healing requirements are high. Pop Horoscope before you need to use a Helios of some kind, then Helios to double the power, then use Horoscope. Or perhaps there are back-to-back -back AoEs. Use Horoscope, use Helios to power up the heal afterwards, then wait for the next raid-wide AoE to go out before popping Horoscope to heal away whatever damage the second AoE does. But of course, let me bring up the surprising single target usage. It is by far the weakest of our abilities in a single target context, but if you've run out of other ability heals and have no other off globals, you can use this as an extra mini heal to weave in between benefics. Everything else comes first still, but more healing is still more healing. Even a little bit of safety is still safety. Level 78, Enhanced Essential Dignity. Simply put, 
this turns Essential Dignity into a skill with two charges instead of just one. Start using Essential Dignity even more. If you need a quick refresh, it's potentially 1100 potency at its absolute max. Level 80, Neutral Sect. On a 120 second recast, this boosts your healing spell power by 20% to start and lasts for 20 seconds. And again, this is healing spell power. Abilities do not count. Additionally, during this 20 seconds, you gain the effects of both sects while using Aspected Benefic and Aspected Helios. For example, not factoring in the extra 20% healing power, Aspected Benefic will heal 200 potency, put up a 1000 potency total hot, and a 500 potency shield on the target. Also, it does not affect the MP cost of Aspected Benefic. While in Diurnal Sect to start, it remains at 500 MP. And if you started in Nocturnal, it still remains 900 MP. Anywhere that requires extremely heavy healing, use this. Doubling up on the bonuses of your Aspected spells is huge, even without factoring in that 20% extra healing. But obviously, 20% extra healing power is also a huge boost. Either one of those abilities on its own is very strong, but they're combined into one for a really strong boost. And big trash pulls obviously are included in this. Enemies can quickly shred through a tank's shield, but Aspected Benefic, Benefic 2, Aspected Benefic will likely work out fine and even better than before if you're needing GCD healing. The only problem is the regens will not gain multiple applications at once, but not everything can be perfect. Summarily, use this any time you need a lot of GCD healing or a lot of Aspected healing. Remember that your regens combine with your Kohili's regens, but you cannot stack shields from a Scholar Kohili or another Astrologian. Ultimately, this skill alone is reason enough to know how to use both sects individually because you gain both at once. Even though it's only 20 seconds, knowing both sides of the coin is extremely important to make the most out of Neutral Sect. Either way, this is our ultimate ability and it rounds out our kit nicely. Continue to practice and learn all the ways you can use your new toolkit effectively. And then you can go take on Pegasus in the Duelist Kingdom. Thank you for watching my Astrologian 30 to 80 skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. My goal is to help players improve in whatever ways I can. Take care and have fun in your adventures across Eorzea. May the power of an Hogs lay waste to your enemies.